episode two of Tin Shack, we're gonna install the doors on the front of the building. To put that all in context, you probably ought to watch episode one, which I'll put a link in the description. We talked about at the end of that video, what kind of door that I was going to put in. I decided that I'm gonna put in swinging doors, and there's a couple of reasons for that. That's a big opening in that, and that opening exists because I wanna get uh, my boat in and out of there plus my car and the other thing that I want to do is to put my my lawn gear in there my tractors and my lawnmowers in the back of the shed I want to I'm, I'm gonna put all of my tool storage that's for another video somewhere down the line but one of the problems with this if I put these swinging doors I decided that instead of trying to open the uh, the doors wide what I'm gonna do is put asymmetrical doors in. So one door is gonna be four foot wide and the other door will take up the final width of, of the opening. That way when I go in and out, I'm using a smaller door for things like my lawn tractor and my mower and I'm not having to open up these large, these large doors. So that's, that's today's goal um, is to start the install of, of these doors. This episode is just doing the framing. Uh, I haven't decided how to build those doors yet. I'm thinking I'm gonna get some, some metal siding and make, make that out of metal siding, but I, I don't know yet. So I still have to frame it up and I'm going to, to build the frames on either side of the opening, which will shrink that opening and then give me a location or a place that I can screw the hinges on for those, for those doors to operate. Right. Let's go build those sides. So I'm not going to frame this all the way around. I'm going to leave the top trim piece as, as the top of the doors. Uh, eventually what I'll do is I'll put in a, an L bracket up there so the doors will close against that L, L, L bracket. But I do want to narrow the door so I have a piece of tin siding left over from the construction and I'm going to build this out 11 and a half inches on either side and uh, if I got to frame that in and then I have to attach that tin siding to that frame that I'm going to build. So let's go do that. The first thing I need to do is pull off this, this white vertical trim. Uh, I need to get access to this to the side of this because I'm going to I'm going to bolt the framework that I'm building right to the framework of the garage. Uh, that way I can secure it and it's not going to come away. I can't nail it because it's a metal it's a metal frame. So the only way the only option I have is to bolt it and I want to do that for a couple of reasons actually. The first, the first is obviously I need to have the framework to, to bolt the, the siding to, but the other thing is because there's no, there's no cross members or no 45 degrees degree uh, framework up here, this end of the building has a little bit of rock or racking. So by putting in that, that 11 and a half inch extension and bolting it to to the building, both up on the top and on the side, I can prevent any, any kind of racking or any kind of wind load making that thing rock back and forth. So after I put the doors in, I'm pretty confident the doors will then operate properly and uh, not become misaligned. Leastwise, that's the plan. So with access to this side of the, the vertical support, I can now drill holes through this so that I can attach the framework that I'm going to build directly to it. So I'll drill a hole all the way through this box channel through the through the two by four and then I'll, I can bolt those together. The next step is to build the framework. So let's do that. I mentioned in video one that all the way around the perimeter I put in a pressure treated sill plate 
and I just installed the sill plate uh, for the entry and it it's, gives me a place to nail things or screw things too. But the problem is, is the sill plate in the front's at ground level. So I have this piece of uh, four inch pressure treated that's one inch thick or three quarters of an inch thick. And I'm going to install that. So it'll be this thin piece of pressure treated on top of the two by six. And then I'm going to mount the framework to, to this. And the reason is, is I want to get enough distance off the ground so that when it rains and splashes that the unpressure treated uh, two by fours aren't sitting at ground level. So I've raised this up three quarters of an inch. Uh, that should be enough protection to, to keep that from, from rotting for, for years to go. I love old tools and you know part of what I do on the channel is restoration. This is an old Stanley Square. I found it in a yard sale years and years ago. It was a mess. It was all rusty. The, there was paint all over it. Still a little bit of paint. And this is uh, beautiful. Uh, it looks like, looks like rosewood or, or, or maybe mahogany. I'm not sure. Uh, I cleaned this thing up and it's been my go-to square for the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years. So I love this thing. to cut this 11 and a half inches long so that it fits across the width of that plate that I'm building.
I bought these quarter inch hex bolts and I'm going to use those to screw through the, the box tubing all the way through the 2x4 and then sandwich this whole thing together and that's what's going to give me the rigidity that I need in order to keep this thing from racking and to keep this attached to the, to the building itself. <clears throat> now the plan is to put four of them in so I'm going to put three along the, the vertical and then I'm going to put one up through the top to that cross frame. Now that the frame is all up, I have to cut this tin so that it matches the width from here to a point over here. Now just remember, I've got the white trim that's going to go over this corner. So it doesn't have to come completely to the corner. But one thing that I, what I'm hoping to do is on this siding, you have these two, these two ridges. And I want to bridge the two ridges, or, or include the two ridges, so that those two ridges are even up and down that vertical section. And I'm going to cut this. So this whole thing is 14 inches. I don't need the whole 14 inches. But if I come down and pick a spot along the edge of this, I can cut it to 13 inches. And if I cut 13 inches, then I can follow this this uh, minor ridge line that I have in the panel. And that 13 inches is going to get me right about to here on, on the metal, which is more than enough to bridge, bridge that with, with the white trim. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to cut, cut this excess off following this line, and then we'll install it up on, on the side of the building. So with that done, now I've got to test fit the panel, and hopefully I don't have to do any more cutting, but let's find out. So as my cousin likes to tell me, hope is not a strategy. So it's too long, so I have to have to cut the cut the length of it here too. So I need to remove an inch and a sixteenth, inch and an eighth, and I'm going to take it off the bottom because I want that that finished edge to be up against that white molding, and the bottom I'm not as quite as worried about. So. Let's take, let's do that. So, one thing to know is when they were cutting the panels off the, the master panels of the 25 footers, 
They were cutting it with a saw. So this is the raw edge anyway. The edge that's going on the bottom is the raw edge that they already cut. And clearly, uh, there was no attempt to cut that completely square. So we'll see if we can't somehow make this look a little, a little square. What a bastard. All right, with that all done, let's go ahead and install the panel. All right, first side's done. You don't need to stick around while I do the second side, but when it's done, I'll bring you back and show you the completed project. So don't go away. <laughs> 